So a few weeks ago, it was announced that the Gateway brand of personal computers was being brought out of retirement and put into use once again. Parent company Acer announced an exclusive deal with Walmart, enabling them to sell Gateway branded products. It's the first time that the Gateway brand has been used in about six years. So why then has Gateway's official website not been updated with these new products? Well, that's because these laptops and tablets, yeah, Gateway is making tablets now, but they're not actually making these tablets because none of these devices are manufactured or even designed by Gateway. So what's going on here? Well, let's find out. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership for a limited time by following the link in this video's description. Gateway was founded way back in 1985 and quickly became one of the most popular computer brands out there. Back then, they were known as Gateway 2000, but simplified their name in the late 90s to just Gateway. They later bought out eMachines in 2004 and were eventually acquired by Acer in 2007. And afterwards, the Gateway brand slowly began to be discontinued. You probably haven't seen one of their laptops in a store in a while. But all of that changed recently when Acer announced a plan to start using the Gateway brand once again. A new website was launched, gatewayusa.com, that contains information about the new laptops, two-in-ones, and even tablets. Yeah, ever thought you'd see a tablet with a Gateway logo on the back? Well, you can pick up one of them at Walmart starting at $69.99. They come in both 8 and 10 inch varieties. You've got three tiers of laptops, Ultra Slim, Convertibles, and Creator, and there are a total of nine laptops as of me recording this. They start at $179 for an 11.6 inch machine. This one comes with an AMD A4 CPU, 4 gigs of RAM, and 64 gigs of storage. And it's worth noting that these lower end models don't have SSDs, but rather eMMC storage. The highest end machine costs $999, and it's one of their creator machines with a 15.6 inch screen, a 10th gen Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060, and a 256 gig SSD. So I was intrigued the moment I heard about these, especially considering the mixed reviews you can find on Walmart's site. Most of the machines rank pretty decently, though there aren't many reviews except for the lowest end machine, which has 83 reviews and ranks 2.6 out of 5 stars. Most of these reviewers gave the machine a 1 star rating, so I knew I just had to purchase this because I wanted to see what all the fuss was about. What exactly was so wrong with this computer that it only got 2.6 out of 5 stars? I've also been in the market for a smaller form factor laptop, mainly to write video scripts while on the go. I currently have a 15 inch machine, which is an Acer actually, and it works great, but it would be nice to have something a little more lightweight and compact. So I was going to purchase this one, but I instead decided on the 11.6 inch 2 in 1 machine because it had better reviews, not as many, but but better reviews, it wasn't 2.6 out of 5 stars, and it was only $20 more. Most of the hardware in this model is the same, but it comes with an Intel Celeron CPU instead of the AMD A4, and it includes a year of Office 365 Personal, which costs $70 on its own. Obviously, the largest change is the touchscreen, which can be folded back to create a tablet. So I placed an order for one, and it just arrived, so Let's open this thing up and see what it's all about. All right, everybody, here it is. It just arrived. Uh, anyone notice something strange with this picture here? Yeah, the, <laughs> the box isn't even taped shut. Look at this. They just folded the flaps in. There's no tape on the top here. There is on the bottom, thankfully. There is tape here. But yeah, this came from Walmart.com, which is the only place you can order this from. I don't believe these are being sold in stores, at least not at my local Walmart. Uh, I had to purchase this online. And uh, <laughs> things don't look very good so far. I mean, look at this. Um, so this shipped via FedEx. They have this label on here. And uh, are you kidding me? There's no... <laughs> There's no packaging. Look at this. It's just in here. There's no bubble wrap or anything. Like, yeah, that's it. And oh my, look at the... What the heck happened? 
Is this thing used or something? It's completely torn there. Uh, so either this was broken. I mean, I don't see how this could have gotten damaged in shipment because if it did, then the the other pieces of uh, the cardboard that ripped off would be in the box. So this was, I guess, like this on the shelf and they just sent it anyway. Hopefully the laptop is okay. <laughs> Let's open it up, I guess. Um, okay, we've got our THX card here. This device features audio that has been tuned by THX. Well, isn't that great? So we've got some packaging here. Here's the laptop itself. We'll take it out. It's actually much heavier than I thought. Yeah, the stickers are on the bottom, actually. The, um the Windows and Intel Celeron stickers. We'll just set it on top here, and we'll open it up, see what it's all about. So we've got our little keyboard protector, and yeah, here it is. There's nothing on the screen. There's like no, um, you know, plastic covering. Like you'll have sometimes, they'll put something on the screen. Um, but yeah, you got your gateway branding down here, tuned by THX, your trackpad. Very, very clicky buttons there, and you can probably hear that. And the screen does fold back, so it folds into a tablet. So that's how that is. So if you want to use it in tablet mode. Uh, doesn't really lock into place at all. You can see it's literally just kind of there. So that's eh, not the greatest. I mean, it still works. Like, you can have it as a tablet, but it's not going to, like, lock into place or anything. Uh, you can also, I mean, I've, like, seen it in the ads where they, they will have it... Um, up like this, like you can have it on a on a stand. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm sure we all know how these kind of devices work. So we'll set the laptop aside or the or the two in one aside, and let's see what else we got in the box here. So we've got a little cardboard insert that holds the laptop. We have a oh my a very tiny power adapter. This is the power supply right here. This is probably the smallest laptop. <laughs> charger that I've ever seen. And we've got our documentation right here. What on earth do we got in here? So we got, this is probably a little manual here. Important product information, blah, blah, blah. To obtain warranty service, please contact GPU company. GPU company. <laughs> I, I guess that's just, maybe the company is actually called GPU company. Or that's just a generic, like, filler. That's kind of funny. Very small. This is probably just your, like, warranty information. Yeah, it says GPU company. That's in another line. Here's the English right here. To obtain warranty service, please contact GPU company at support at gatewayusa.com. And there's their phone number. So, <laughs> all right. That's cool. Here's your Office 365 card. It tells you how to use Microsoft Word and all the other programs, or it literally tell you how to use it. It just says you get a free year membership. Here's your little quick start guide. It's got the model number down there, and it tells you how to plug in the laptop and use it. And then, oh, well, here's a code. What is this? 50% off your first year of Kidomi. Fingerprint digital, product of fingerprint digital, hundreds of games, books, and videos for all learning levels from ages 3 to 13. Well, uh, if anyone wants a free Kidomi code, there you go. First come, first serve with that. And that's it, everybody. So even though the laptop's box was damaged and partially open, not to mention the laptop box being shipped in a unsealed shipping box, I guess everything arrived safe and sound, but <laughs> I'm kind of concerned about the fact that that box was open. Taking a look at the machine itself, it's got a decent amount of ports for a laptop of its size. On the left, you've got your power port, a USB 3 port, and mini HDMI. And on the right side, you have your power button, a micro SD card slot, a USB 2.0 port, and a headphone jack. Yeah, we still have those in 2020. It ships with Windows 10 Home version 1909 in S mode. And it also came with some pre-installed crapware, which I removed. If you've never heard of S mode, it's a special mode of Windows 10 that takes the place of Windows 10 S. You remember this? This was a dedicated version of Windows 10 that 
could only run apps from the Microsoft Store. Well, now it's a mode of Windows 10 and it comes enabled by default on certain computers and this happens to be one of them. What's nice is you can switch out of this mode for free to get standard Windows 10 Home and you'll need to do this if you want to run standard Windows applications that aren't in the Microsoft Store. Otherwise, you'll be pretty limited with what applications you can install and you'll be stuck with Microsoft Edge for the web browser. It's a one-time change too. Once you leave S mode, you cannot return to it. Oh, and remember that warranty pamphlet with the weird GPU company name? Well, it turns out that that is the name of the computer manufacturer, at least according to Windows. But when you call the support number, the automated system tells you that you've reached gateway support, so I'm not sure. Yeah, hi, I'm trying to reach GPU company. The keyboard and trackpad aren't great. The trackpad especially feels very cheap. It's very loud and it takes a larger amount of force than I'm used to to click the buttons. At first I thought it was complete trash because I was having some major issues with it. Just moving my finger across the trackpad was causing the mouse pointer to go haywire. Luckily this was fixed after a restart. The keyboard is crammed, to say the least, but what can you expect from an 11.6 inch laptop? It's got some annoying layout changes too, like the size of the up and down arrow keys being cut in half and merged together. I've seen this on many laptops, it is pretty common, but it's still annoying. It's even this way on my Acer laptop. But then there are some weird oddities, like the backslash key being moved down by the space bar and the delete key taking its place. It certainly isn't the greatest typing experience in the world, but it is doable. In fact, I typed this portion of the script on it. As for the machine's performance, I'm really not that impressed. But keep in mind that this only has a dual-core processor with a base speed of 1.1 GHz and 4 GB of RAM, meaning the processor barely meets Windows 10 minimum system requirements of 1 GHz, and the RAM is only double what Windows 10 requires, which is 2 GB. But it's still usable. The touchscreen is pretty responsive, too. I was able to scroll through menus and Windows with no problem, but using Microsoft Edge was not pleasant. It had trouble just keeping up as I was typing this part of the script in Google Docs, but Chromium-based web browsers aren't known for being the best when it comes to memory usage. Oh, and it's also got a webcam by the way, but it's only 480p. Definitely not going to give you the best video quality. But the build quality of the machine is actually pretty decent. The plastic used for the outer casing doesn't feel cheap, it's slim and sleek, and it's also virtually silent as there aren't any moving parts, at least as far as I can tell, there's not even a fan on the back. My only complaint is the hinge, because you cannot open the laptop with one hand. You'll just pick the entire machine up off the table. So you have to hold the base down with one hand to be able to open it. Now you may have noticed throughout this video I've been using the phrase gateway branded laptops and that's for a reason. The poor reviews on the lowest end laptop got me to do some digging and it turns out that these machines are not sold by Gateway or Acer. This is evident in the copyright text at the bottom of the new website. Gateway and the Gateway logo are the registered trademarks of Acer Incorporated and are used under license from Acer America Corporation. It explains why Gateway's main website, gateway.com, hasn't been updated in years. According to it, the newest Gateway products are the LT series of laptops, the SX and DX desktops, and the 1ZX tablet all of which run Windows 8. Ars Technica has a great article on this that I'll have linked down below. They discovered that the laptops are manufactured by a company called Shenzhen Beemorn Technology Company Limited, and they're imported to the US by Evo Products. An Acer rep quoted in the article stated that, although Acer does own the Gateway brand, it is not directly involved in the production or manufacture of these devices. So you're essentially getting a generic machine with a gateway logo slapped on the back. In fact, the people who import this machine have their name on a line of laptops sold at Walmart which look almost identical. One of them costs the same as the lowest end gateway machine 
and it has pretty poor reviews as well. It got 2.9 out of 5 stars from 421 reviewers. If you decide to buy one of these, I'd recommend the Gateway branded one since it has 4GB of RAM instead of 2, but I really wouldn't recommend buying either of these. I also found a 2-in-1 machine that's very similar to the machine that I got, though this one costs more and has less storage, only 32 gigs as opposed to 64, but the rest of the specs are the same, 4 gigs of RAM, a dual-core Intel Celeron on CPU. It even comes with the same one-year subscription of Office 365. And looking at the product photos, it looks exactly like the Gateway one. And if you had to pick between these two machines, I'd recommend the Gateway one because, well, you're going to get more storage for less. But like I said, Gateway has nothing to do with these computers, aside from licensing their brand name to the manufacturer. They didn't design them, they didn't manufacture them, and it seems like they're not even the ones operating the new website. And that really sucks. But you know what doesn't suck? Today's video sponsor, Skillshare, who made the purchase of this laptop possible. Skillshare is the online learning community that gives you the tools to boost your creative skills through interactive video lessons. Whether you're wanting to learn a new skill or brush up on a topic that you already know, I'd recommend checking out their wide range of classes on productivity, creative writing, and video editing, just to name a few topics. But that doesn't even scratch the surface of what Skillshare has to offer. Maybe you're thinking of getting into video editing, and if so, check out this Skillshare class from Sean Dykink that gives some great tips on creating visually appealing video projects. You'll even be able to download the assets used in the video lessons, so that you can follow along and maybe get creative with your own edits. Most of these classes are under an hour in length and are split up into multiple sections for more convenient viewing. And since Skillshare is a learning community, you can chat with other users taking the same class and read feedback from people who have already finished it. With Skillshare's premium plan, you'll get access to every class on the platform, and it's less than $10 per month if billed annually. And for a limited time, Skillshare is offering you a free trial of their premium membership. All you have to do is click the link in this video's description and sign up. So what are you waiting for? Check out Skillshare today and start learning something. So that's my take on the new Gateway 2-in-1 machine that isn't made by Gateway. For $200, this is what you get a rebadged machine that isn't really that different from the Evo model. If you're considering buying one of these laptops, I'd certainly stay away from the lowest end machine because the reviews aren't that great. As the saying goes, you get what you pay for. If you want a better Windows 10 experience, I'd recommend getting a machine with a faster processor rather than one that barely meets its system requirements. Though I am interested in seeing what the higher end gateway models are like. And if any of you guys own one, be sure to let us know how it is in the comments below. That's all for today's video. I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to give it a like and get subscribed. And as always, I'll see you all in the next video.